BestBookBits.com presents Top 20 Sales Books. With over 500 book summaries currently featured on BestBookBits.com, this new series titled Top 20 Books will dispense the wisdom of the top 20 books on subjects like sales, health, money, personal development, habits, business, marketing, time management, spirituality, and more in one presentation. The top 20 books chosen is my take on the best books on sales I have come across. If I've missed a great book on sales you have read, let me know in the comments below. All books are featured on the website bestbookbits.com as summaries in all formats like video, audio, written in PDF. Get ready to learn everything about sales from the top financial authors on the planet. Counting down from number 20, stay tuned to find out if you agree with number one. Let's go. Number 20, The 25 Sales Habits of Highly Successful People by Stephen Schiffman. Your prospects are more value conscious and information conscious than ever. You must identify what is important to any given prospect, then learn how to appeal to those values. Be a tactful educator and a facilitator, not steamroller. Treat all your sales work as a consulting assignment. The best salespeople are professional problem solvers. Listening is the first part of the secret, and identifying the mutually accepted solutions is the second part. Referrals are the lifeblood of a successful career in sales, and yet salespeople are usually terrified to ask for them. Enthusiasm builds bridges. Realize how important attitude is in sales work. Number 19, get more referrals now by Bill Katz. The way of the world is meeting people through other people, and the referral is the warm way we get into people's lives. The chances of making the sale were almost four times greater with referrals. Building your business from referrals is the best route to success. Cold calling is God's punishment for failure to get enough referrals. Listening is the most important relationship skill you can practice. A relationship that's had a problem handled well is a stronger relationship than one that's never had a problem. The three keys to asking prospects for referrals are, number one, serve them before you sell them. Number two, plant seeds that you are building your business from referrals. And number three, when the rapport is good, ask them directly for referrals. Be a serve person first and a salesperson second. If you don't have an attitude of service, your ability to gain referrals will be severely limited. And number 18, Selling 101 by Zig Ziglar. The question in the world of sales is, how do you persuade? Answer, you don't persuade by telling, you persuade by asking. A large portion of selling is devoted to asking questions, with emphasis on listening for the answers. Selling with integrity is the only way you can build a long-term career with the same company selling the same product to the same people, which brings sales stability and financial security. Attitude is always a player on your team. All successful sales professionals utilize listening skills to their fullest. Interestingly enough, the more salespeople knew about their prospects' needs, the better position they are in to meet those needs. If we can give someone a reason for buying and an excuse for buying, the chances are rather dramatically improved that he will buy. People buy what they want when they want it more than they want the money it cost. Emotion makes the prospects take action now, and logic enables them to justify the purchase later. Fear of loss is greater than the desire for gain. And number 17, Getting to Yes by Roger Fisher and William Urey. The ability to see situation from the other side is one of the most important skills the negotiator can possess. Recognize and understand emotions, theirs and yours. Listen actively and acknowledge what is being said. Face the problem, not the people. Don't view the other side as adversaries. For a wise solution, Reconcile interest, not positions. Ask for principal justification of their stance to show them how ridiculous it is. And last, don't be a victim. Number 16, The Ultimate Sales Machine by Chet Holmes. At any one time, for any product or service, 3% are buying now. 7% are open to the idea of buying. The remaining 90% are in three categories. The top one third are not against it, not for it. Just thinking about it. The next one third think they're not interested, and the final one third are definitely not interested. The hardest thing we need to do today is grab the attention of potential buyers and keep their attention long enough to help them buy your product. When you sell, you break rapport, but when you educate, you build it. Seven steps in selling establish rapport, 
qualify the buyer, build value, overcome objections, close the sale, and follow up. Be empathetic and care about them. Be more interested in them than anyone else has ever before. If you want to be fascinating, be fascinated. If you want to be fascinating, be fascinated. Mirror body language and tonality. Ask great questions to find common interest and get personal. And last, have a sense of humor. And number 15, The Art of Closing the Sale by Brian Tracy. If you are completely fluent in closing and absolutely confident in your ability to ask for the order, you will be more aggressive in prospecting in the first place and have higher self-esteem. Personality constitute 80% of your success. Top salespeople accept 100% responsibility for everything they do. The top 3% of people in every organization look at themselves as self-employed. Your customer can never believe in your product any more than you do. Top salespeople know that what they're going to say word for word and rehearse. Poor salespeople wing it and sweat as they say whatever comes to their mind and hope. Prospecting, presenting, and closing are the only three activities that pay you money. All the rest is waste. And your goal is to make the closing as smooth as possible for the customer. It should be quick and your whole presentation should be structured with the close in mind. And number 14, Getting Past No by William Urey. When we're negotiating, we are trying to get the other person to agree with us. You are not able to control the other's behavior, but you can control yours. Having control of your behavior is the first step in overcoming the other's no. Start by trying to see the other's point of view. Even if something seems completely irrational to you, it may be that the person has a valid argument. Communicate persuasively and optimistically. Remove any obstacles in the way of the business so you get a yes more quickly. And number 13, Secrets of Closing the Sale by Zig Ziglar. If the prospect has a problem, they want to solve it. Sales process is a constant closing process. Make it easy for the prospect to buy and translate it into an affordable amount. Ask lots of questions. Every professional or tax consultant, doctors, lawyers, Socratic method of leading people to decisions. People don't buy what they really need. We sell people what they want. People buy what they want when they want the item more than the cost of the item. Closing is an attitude. It's everything that matters in sales. Selling is a transference of feeling. Selling is a transference of feeling. If you were convinced, you can be convincing. Logic makes them think. Emotion makes them act. Logic plus emotion together equals want to own. Persistence separates the best salespeople. And number 12, spin selling by Neil Rackham. The spin sequence of questions. Situation questions, problem questions, explore problems, difficulties, and dissatisfaction, implication questions, and need payoff questions. Successful sellers concentrate on objection prevention, not on objection handling. Your objective shouldn't be to close the sale, but to open a relationship. The idea is to take a problem that the buyers perceive to be small and build it up into a problem large enough to justify action and build up the value or usefulness of the solution. And number 11, how to sell your way through life by Napoleon Hill. The master salesman is a master of others because he is a master of himself. The master salesman becomes a master because of his or her ability to induce other people to act upon motives without resistance or friction. You must sell yourself. You must sell your personality. The master salesman paints a word picture of the thing he is offering for sale. The canvas on which he paints in the imagination of the prospective buyer. Showmanship is one of the important factors in master salesmanship. People buy personalities and ideas much more quickly than they buy merchandise. Remember that people are motivated feelings. Remember also that much of what we believe to be their own feelings consist in reality of thought impulses by which they have unconsciously picked up from the vibrations of thought released by the salesman. And number 10, The Great Sales Book by Jack Collis. Successful selling is essentially a matter of being a first-class communicator. Ask more people to buy what you sell. Without prospects, a salesperson has no business. The quality of our prospects decide the level of our success. The goal of the modern salesperson is to reach agreement rather than overcome objections. Don't sell me products or services. 
Sell me ideas a better self-image, freedom from fear and want, and a philosophy on life that will enable me to grow and reach my potential as a human being. More than 70% of all sales are made on emotional issues, and unless the prospect becomes emotionally involved with the product or service, they are unlikely to buy. There are only two reasons why people buy. Number one, to, to solve a problem. Number two, to make themselves feel good. Give a hard no when an easy yes might suffice. Always be hard on the problem, but soft on the people. And number nine, how to close every sale by Joe Girard. Becoming a successful salesperson requires learning how to sell yourself first. This is because buyers buy into the seller initially before they do the product or service. Recognize that you are your company's number one product. Successful salespeople believe in what they are selling. An excellent salesperson is 100% convinced about the product or service he is carrying. Believe that one can sell to every prospect. Remove any form of negative thinking. Create a winning self-image. A positive self-image influences other people believe to believe in you. Create an appearance of success. Look professional. A professional appearance goes beyond clothing. Make the prospect feel important. Let the customer feel the salesperson's sincerity. Bring a sense of humor to the sales presentation. Nonetheless, use humor at the right time to relax and make the prospect feel comfortable. Assume the sale. Assume the sale. Know how to read buying signals. Appeal to the prospect's ego. The salesperson must assume the role of authority in the process. Give the customer so much service that they feel guilty thinking about doing business with somebody else. And number eight, if you're not first, you're last, by Grant Cardone. Advance and conquer while others contract and retreat. Unreasonable amounts of activity way beyond what's considered normal. You should restructure your day to focus on the most important thing for every business, sales. Reactivate your power base from the people you know and have done business with. The people you know either have the money you want or know people who do. Contacts turn into contracts, and the more contacts, the more contracts. Be unreasonable. Quit being reasonable. Don't settle for just getting by. Get uncomfortable and take unreasonable amounts of action. The discomforts you experience now will guarantee that you'll become comfortable in the future. Any attention is better than no attention. Don't forget add-on sales. Second money is always easier than first money. 80% of sales are made on the 5th to 12th contact but only 10% of salespeople call beyond three times. Ask for referrals. Deliver at wow levels. There is no shortage of money, but there is shortage of action and follow through. And number seven, how I raise myself from failure to success in selling by Frank Betgard. Talk with a little enthusiasm and arouse yourself inside. Force yourself to act enthusiastic and you become enthusiastic. Selling is the easiest job in the world if you work it hard, but the hardest job in the world if you try to work it easy. You can't collect your commission until you make the sale. You can't make the sale till you write the order. You can't write the order till you have the interview, and you can't have an interview till you make the call. The most important secret of salesmanship is to find out what the other fellow wants and help them find the best way to get it. Be an assistant buyer. I assume the role of an assistant buyer in charge. People don't like to be sold, they like to buy. Clothes don't make the man, but they do make 90% of what you see of him. Open your conversation with a big smile and feel the difference. A salesman cannot know too much, but he can talk too much. Find out about a prospect's hobby and then talk about that hobby. It's all in the approach. A customer is either sold or missed by the approach. The first and probably most important step in selling anything, sell yourself first. The foundation of sales lies in getting interviews, sell the appointment, and then sell your product. New customers are the best source of new business. New customers. And number six, Ziegler on selling by Zig Ziglar. One of the basic truisms of selling is that slumps will occur. You're going to hit those plateaus where nothing seems to work very well, personally or professionally. Selling can be and should be fun. So let's make it clear from the beginning that a sense of humor combined with self-esteem that allows you to laugh at yourself will play a significant part in your success in your chosen profession. Recognize that the majority of highly paid veterans in sales or in any field 
are hard workers. Work to stay current with all important ever-changing areas of product knowledge and communication skills. The one thing that customers have always rated highest in the sales world is trust. Listen with your eyes. You can have everything in life you want if you will just help enough other people get what they want. Prospecting is the most important key to sales success. Without prospects, you were disqualified as a sales professional. Until you have a prospect, you have no chance of making a sale. Winners sell benefits. Paint the picture so your prospect sees personal benefits. And number five, we're counting down and getting there. Secrets of Closing the Sales by Charles B. Roth. Establish a buying motive by creating the need or want or strong desire in the prospect's mind. Remember our common human weakness, not being able to say no to a gracious, persuasive, persistent, positive person. Always try at least once more to close the sale. Your most important asset, your attitude. Believe that you can close every prospect on whom you call. Expect success. Expect success. Be calm, serene, and poised. Exert gentle, positive persuasion based on factual knowledge and confidence. Avoid being too eager. Respect your prospect's time. Be persistent. Be enthusiastic. Don't talk too much. Use as few words as possible, especially at the close. To close, you must overcome the fear in the prospect's mind by reassuring him, instill confidence, give him courage. Adjust the speed and tempo of your sales presentation to the speed at which your prospect thinks. Expect orders. Assume the prospect is going to buy. It's just a matter of what kind, how many, and when. And number four, advanced selling strategies by Brian Tracy. Don't try and blaze your own trail. Instead, learn from the success of others. Study the sales techniques which have worked for other people in other settings and with other products and services. Evaluate what worked for them. Adapt these principles to suit your own specific product or service and move ahead. In selling, everything counts, but 80% of your success will derive from the quality of your personality. The key to sales success lies in doing everything you can to build your self-esteem. The higher your self-esteem, the more successful you'll be in a sales role. The very essence of sales success is to build and maintain high-quality relationships with customers. The only way to do that is with trust and credibility. Selling professionally is quite simple. It's the process of persuading someone that the value they will receive from your product or service is greater than its cost. Today's prevailing sales model is 40% building trust, 30% identifying specific needs, 20% presenting solutions to needs, and 10% confirming and closing. You are in the business of developing professional selling friendships. Top salespeople have clear written goals. Most sales are made or lost within the first 30 seconds of contact. All top salespeople consciously and deliberately orchestrate every single element of their environments. This attention to detail is the mark of a true professional. And counting down to number three, The Way of the Wolf by Jordan Belfort. Plain and simple, if your prospect doesn't trust you, there's absolutely no way they're going to buy from you. The prospect must trust the product, you, and your company. People don't buy on logic, they buy on emotion, and they justify their decision with logic. If you want to close at the highest level, then you're going to have to create both types of certainty, logical and emotional. Take immediate control of the sale, and then move the prospect from open to the close along the shortest distance between any two points, a straight line. You must engage in massive intelligence gathering while you simultaneously build massive rapport with your prospect. Every word, every phase, every question you ask, every tonality you use, every single one of them should have the same ultimate goal in mind, which is to increase the prospect's level of certainty as much as humanly possible so that by the time you get to the close, he's feeling so incredibly certain that he almost has to say yes. That's your goal. You're going to have to ask for the order at least two or three times before you have any chance of your prospect saying yes. A prospect must cross over the threshold of certainty before he or she feels comfortable enough to buy. Three things you absolutely must come across in the first four seconds. Be sharp as a tact, enthusiastic as hell, and an expert in your field. 
If you make a negative first impression, it takes eight subsequent positive impressions to erase that one negative first impression. Tonality and body language compromise approximately 90% of your overall communications. Your success is still going to be contingent on your ability to trigger a key emotional state within yourself as you're about to enter the sales encounter and then maintain that state to the very end. Remember that getting into rapport with someone is done primarily through tonality and body language, not your words. You should always use a script, whether you're selling in person or on the phone. And number two, The Challenge of Sale by Matthew Dixon and Brent Adamson. Selling wasn't an innate ability. It was a set of identifiable skills that could be learned. Surveys of customers consistently show that they put the highest value on salespeople who make them think, who bring new ideas, who find creative and innovative ways to help the customer's business. Customers demand more depth and expertise. They expect salespeople to teach them things they don't know. The challenge rep is the rep who loves to debate, the one who uses his or her deep understanding of a customer's business not to simply serve them, but to teach them, to push their thinking and provide them with new and different ways to think about their business and how to compete. Six attributes that set challenger reps apart. Number one, offers the customer unique perspectives. Number two, has a strong two-way communication skills. Three, knows the individual customer's value drivers. Four, can identify economic drivers of the customer's business. Five, is comfortable discussing money. And number six, can pressure the customer. The challenger is focused on pushing the customer out of their comfort zone. The challenger rep wins by maintaining a certain amount of constructive tension across the sale. Customers place a great deal of importance on a smooth, uncomplicated purchase. Customers are saying rather empathetically, stop wasting my time, challenge me, teach me something new. Customer loyalty is a result not what you sell, but how you sell. Demonstrate a high level of professionalism. Don't make your customers work so hard to spend their money. And last, teaching, tailoring, and taking control. And the number one book on sales is, you guessed it, Sell or Be Sold by Grant Cardone. Selling is a prerequisite for life. Selling impacts every person on this planet. Your ability or inability to sell, persuade, negotiate, and convince others will affect every area of your life and will determine how well you survive. The ability to communicate and convince others is an asset for you. The inability to communicate is a liability. This inescapable truth is that to be truly great at anything, you must devote yourself, your energy, and your resources to a career in selling. The ability to predict is the first thing that happens when you become a professional. A salesman who can't close deals won't like selling. Selling yourself. Only to the degree you are sold can you sell. Only to the degree you are sold can you sell. You have to be 100% certain that what you are selling is better than all other options. Being unreasonable means that you are sold on what you're selling and it is your conviction alone that will sell others on it. Become so thoroughly sold on your product that your conviction is irresistible to others. I assure you that the less hung up you are on money, the easier money will come to you. Most sales are lost over unspoken objections. You have to get your buyer to want your product more than he wants his money. And your prospect is never the problem. Never. Salespeople, not the prospect, are the ultimate barriers to every sale. Love your product, love your service, love your customer, and love yourself enough to learn how to hard sell. It's vital that salespeople know about people first and product second. It's vital that salespeople know about people first and product second. Selling is 80% people and 20% product. Be more interested in your customer than you are in yourself, your sales process, your product, or your commission, and you will make more sales. Communication equals sales. If you don't get into communication with a buyer, you have no chance of ever making the sale. The human quality involved in selling can never be replaced. People are senior to products. Always, always, always agree with the customer. Never negotiate with words. Write your negotiations down on paper. Service is senior to selling and giving is senior to getting. Human beings are much more valuable than money. Treat them like that and you'll be rewarded. The hard sell. It is said that if you have to ask someone five times before you get a yes, And take massive action. Most people incorrectly estimate the amount of effort it takes to get the results they want. 
Remember that a product can be shopped, but a great attitude cannot. The best sales processes are shorter rather than longer. And last, treat success as your duty, obligation, and responsibility, not as a choice or as a job. And that's a wrap on my take on the top 20 sales books. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Let me know if there was a book I missed. Let me know your favorite sales quote in the comments below. Check out our YouTube channel with over 500 video book summaries uploaded previously. Like the video, comment, share on social media, and check the website bestbookbits.com where you'll find 500 written book summaries where you can download in the PDF in video categories from biographies, business and marketing, habits, health, leadership, money, everything from personal development, philosophy, psychology, real estate, relationships, of course, sales, spirituality, success, time management, and travel. If you're into the audio podcast version, check out mixcloud.com forward slash bestbookbits, where you'll find over 500 book summaries in audio format. Also, follow us on Instagram for daily motivational quotes and book summaries. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something from this. Go out there. Have a great day and sell yourself. Take care. Bye-bye now.